Okay, hi everybody. Today is Tuesday, June 13th. This is the Kubernetes SIG testing meeting. It's being publicly recorded and will be posted to YouTube either today or tomorrow. Um, relatively small agenda. I'm not sure how long we'll go for discussion. Um, first thing I wanted to talk about was just how the 1.7 release is going. Um, it seems like we have, we have um, surprisingly had kind of a smoother ride than last release, although maybe that's because we're not yet really uh, drilling down. But as far as I know, we're still on track to lift code freeze tomorrow. Uh, we've had a few submit queue bumps along the way, uh, primarily due to some quota issues related to networking tests, which have since been kicked over to the slow suite. So we had uh, subnetworks quota get bumped, and then we had an ingress test, which was failing to delete firewalls. Um, the other issue we've had is with namespaces taking a long time to delete. And it seems like the root cause is that we are not, basically the algorithm to delete namespaces is really susceptible to uh, flicking beyond a 30 second boundary. And if it hits, uh, and if there are too many tests that are concurrently attempting to delete namespaces, it sort of cascades and gets us really close to a timeout threshold. Um, so we believe that by bumping a number of concurrent workers, we're uh, under that threshold again, and we're going to look at a way to optimize the performance of that deletion loop um, as a post 1.7 goal. Um, yeah, I believe that's all the news I have from the 1.7 release. And just one other little bit of administrivia is that uh, all SIG documentation is now being driven by a SIGs.yaml file inside of the community repo. Uh, so I think some of the docs or some of the SIGs readmes were accidentally overwritten, including ours. Uh, and I'm going to get a PR out later today to include a link to our YouTube channel and a couple other things that were uh, lost amidst that noise. Um, anyway, I think that's all I have there. Um, next up, we've got uh, Eric put together a really awesome swag at the at a roadmap for SIG testing, looking at uh, 1.8 and uh, beyond for the rest of 2017. Figured we could just sort of walk through what we've got on that, um, uh, open it up for discussion if folks have some particular questions or comments. So with that, I will hand off to you, Eric. Cool, thank you. I will share the screen. And um, yeah, so I put a link to it in the chat. Oh, let me also put it um, into the Slack channel. Um, and join the Google group uh, if you need access to it, which hopefully everyone here is already a part of. Um, yeah, so you know, I sort of just uh, mostly threw this together, it's not necessarily authoritative, and there's not really uh, anyone assigned to it yet. Um, but at this, um, yeah. Um, so the you know high level goals, I guess I was trying to capture is that we want to be able to um, use any Kubernetes cluster to set up CI and test Kubernetes. Um, and then we want you know simple inner uh, commands to do that testing and use different layers. So we have, you know, rather than one super complicated tool, uh, we have, you know, multiple layers um, where they're like, you know, so like Prow's job is to monitor GitHub and start pods. And then inside the pod, we have a different tool to like manage that complexity there. Um, and then, uh, you know, sort of increase the idea of making everything uh, all of our tooling, you know, such such that everyone has access to the same tools and that everyone can participate in making them better and uh, uh, share, distribute the cost of uh, operating it. So um, for Prow, uh, listed a bunch of things here. I think the, you know, most important goal, uh, at least for you know, the people working on Prow currently is to make sure that it can run in any Kubernetes cluster as opposed to just GKE. 
Uh, Joe's been spending a bunch of effort this um, release trying to remove those dependencies, and I think they are all mostly um, removed, but it would be, um, you know, we'd really like to have, but yeah, uh, we're not entirely sure if that's the case or not. Um, and so I suspect there may be some, you know, unforeseen things that we need to do in 1.8. And so we'd really like to find, um, we have some, you know, have like a second Kubernetes provider, like maybe Red Hat or uh, I know, like, I think various people have expressed interest. Like I think Red Hat, I know. Um, and then I think uh, maybe also Microsoft has sort of expressed some interest in, uh, you know, getting it to work on their systems. And so that would be cool. And I know uh, Samsung ha has been making a Helm chart, uh, which is pretty cool. And then something else is I'd really like to get to where it's a little bit more automated, the, the, at least the config part, because right now if I add a new job, um, on Jenkins we actually have a post submit job which will like update the Jenkins config and it'd be nice to add that for uh, Pro. So I had a real quick question. Is, yeah. is your plan tentatively to split Pro because Pro is part of the monster repo, right? Like all of test infra, is in Pro is only one directory underneath test infra of which there are many tools. Is there a plan to split Pro off as its own beast? Um, you know, potentially. Um, uh, I don't. I don't necessarily. I mean, yeah. I mean, we, we certainly could do that, but I sort of. I don't. I don't really. I don't know. I guess I would want there to be. That's not a priority from our side, I guess, uh, because I feel like we're all pretty productive in the test infra repo, which is pretty small and fast to get reviews and submit code. So there's nothing really from, you know, I, I, I think that if we do actually have, you know, other, yeah, there's nothing preventing that, but there's nothing really making it obvious that we need to do that work right now to me. What is the, but yeah, I mean, I know that you are interested in that. I mean, what's the motivation for doing that sooner? I mean, is there any, what's the motivation for wanting to do that? Just a decoupling so people can just leverage and it has a canonical source of documentation. Usually when you go to a repository, it's like one item and your documentation goes from soup to nuts from the main readme page, right? Because right now when you navigate to test infra, it's not clear to anyone other than the people working on the project, what all the test infra entails usually like if you want something to live on its own it lives in its own repo has its own life cycle etc and managed separately i guess my counter argument to that would be that the readme inside of the prow directory is relatively comprehensive and when we talk about prow we usually point people to that that subdirectory um the readme inside of the test info repo doesn't call out every specific subdirectory but it calls out a good chunk of them like what if i need to add a new job um, and then the only, like, for better or for worse, the technical reason that comes to mind is uh, I would personally love to see some of the GitHub code potentially shared between uh, a variety of testing utilities that use it. Or, or I guess I'm thinking of, like, specific constants like Katespot um, that are kind of shared between Munch GitHub and Prowl and Velodrome and Gubernator and couple other things, right? Uh, whether or not it makes sense to have the variety of testing tools all have a common library or something to refer to. But I, I agree that like if we sort of productize Prow enough to the point where it belongs in its own repo, we should do so. But I'm not sure that we're losing a lot by having it be in a subdirectory if that sub if that subdirectory is like pretty well self-contained. So I, I think there's so much in the test info repo that I don't know if we want to revisit packaging everything into more usable chunks, if that would help or because uh, right now everything is just kind of scattered, at least to be all over the place. Um, you know, rather than break things out, I, I would prefer a, kind of a repackaging or reorganization of the repo. Yeah, I was going to make a similar suggestion. Maybe the, the correct sequence of events is, first of all, you know, break up what's there, which I think is essentially what Eric suggested, into <clears throat> layers, uh, specifically in the Prowl case. And then once we have very, you know, separated out layers of things that are, in theory, 
reusable, then, then pull those out into their own repos as a second pass, which I think is what you were just saying. <laughs> yep. Um, yeah. So uh, I also want to do some alerting because like right now we don't really have like if something's going slow or whatever, like we don't really have, uh, we haven't really instrumented Prowl yet to do anything. Um, and we would like to start finding out about problems uh, based on some sort of, you know, monitoring and graphing that we have and potentially set up alerts around that as opposed to, you know, someone pinging us on Slack saying like, hey, something isn't working. Uh, so the bootstrap library is the thing that, you know, checks out the repositories inside the container and um, uploads logs. Um, and so, yes. So one thing we'd really like to do is sort of just provide a Bazel bootstrap image so that like if you are using Prow with Bazel, like essentially there's not a lot of configuration necessary. You can just sort of say, you know, point at it and because um, otherwise you need to like make your own image and that can get, um, you know, hairy. But uh, if we sort of, you know, leverage Bazel and Prow, uh, we could easily get to where, um, you know, as long as your, uh, if, if your, you know, if your repo is not doing that, then you can, of course, ship whatever image you want because Prow just starts a container. It doesn't really care what's happening inside your pods. But if you're uh, using Bazel, then you essentially have a very simple configuration to just say, go Bazel test all the things in my repo and we'll do all that. Um, oh, another thing is right now, um, you know, especially as we go to the lots of different repos, we probably don't want everything in test infra, especially it, like right now the job definitions of like what jobs do I want to run on this repo or that repo? We probably want to figure out some other way to do that um, as opposed to storing everything in the test infra repo, especially if we're like getting people who aren't even part of Kubernetes uh, using Prow. So just, I guess, now that you've said it that way, I'm curious, are you talking about having like each repo that would be tested would have um, jobs within it? Or would or are we talking about just having a separate jobs repository within the Kubernetes organization? I think it might be a bit of both. I mean, yeah, I mean, one thing is uh, maybe for EDE tests, that might span multiple repos. So maybe we'd want to put that in its own location but maybe if, um, I'm not exactly sure. I think this needs to have um, more thought put into it. But, uh, but, like boot, but, bootstrap, but bootstrap assumes it's in test infra. Um, so if someone is wanting to use bootstrap elsewhere, uh, that's sort of, uh, yeah, strange. We just need to provide a good experience for, yeah. Um, and then for the scenarios, yeah, I think this is sort of, you know, talking same, same sort of deal where we have like a basal, like it's really easy to do testing with basal. Um, and then, so the Kubernetes, the EDE scenario has a mode where it runs inside a Docker container, uh, which we don't want if we're already running inside of Prow since it's already inside a container. Uh, we also have a bunch of... Uh, we really just want to move, we basically want to move all of the junk. There's sort of, we, we just want to move all the junk into where all of our EDE tests are encapsulated inside a single cube test command. Um, now COPS does some weird stuff inside its own EDE runner.sh. And then we want to finish, uh, we've been moving a bunch of, like the pattern right now is the scenario sets environment variables and then launches the EDE runner, which then translates the environment variables into cube test flags. We just want to switch that to where the scenario just sends cube test the flags. Um, and could we, then, could we yeah. potentially change that and flip that instead of passing flags, could we just have a configuration file? So that way, when you're looking through as part of your end to end test, cause this is what, what we're doing inside of the repository itself now with component configs is just specify a single, configuration file which has all of the parameterized 
values for the test or testing scenarios uh, in a in a single file. That way, like when you're looking at it, it's pretty easy to to grok and reproduce too. Because if you're trying to look through ten thousand logs of of whatever Jenkins builder execution stuff, it's difficult to take those logs and then recreate and figure out what the parameters were. But if you have a single configuration file, you can say like, okay, I can test this on my own really easily. Just grab the configuration file and away I go. Yes. I mean, that, that's essentially the, uh, yeah, like essentially, you know, any, anything, anything, any job we run should be able to, um, you know, if you just clone the test info repo and call bootstrap with the job name, it should run the job exactly in the same way that we do. And furthermore, yeah, but the goal would be to, to not test it in the same way you do to reproduce in your own scenario. Because if, if I'm vendor a, I don't want to rely on your infrastructure. I want to basically take a configuration file and see if I can reproduce because my deployment might be vastly different than yours. Uh, right. Yeah. I think there is, um, yeah, I, I think that, uh, you know, we are wanting to, so we sort of essentially have that where one of the arguments that you pass are these, um, you know, yeah. So, I mean, yeah, that, that's essentially the goal. Um, the way things are composed right now, they're not super, uh, they're not super composable. Like what we, I, I'd really like to get to where we define things like a slow suite and a parallel suite and a, you know, maybe even a node suite and a, whatever suites, a bunch of different suites that are detached from like providers. And so then we can compose together like a, you know, cops on AWS deployment with the slow suite uh, and maybe the, you know, 1.6 release or something. Um, that's like right now we sort of have that ability to do that if we had, if we're structuring things that way, but we haven't really structured things that way. We kind of just have, you know, the, you know, the GKE slow release and there's not an easy way to take that to some other environment, but we want to make that better. I don't know if I have that somewhere. Yeah. Right. Like, you know, refactor these to make it easier to recompose to your thing. I mean, maybe, maybe I misunderstand, but it does seem we're trying to sort of crawl, crawl, walk, run where like, getting rid of all the environment variables so that we can't even allow ourselves e2e runner.sh and all that stuff is the, the crawl and then converting all of the flags that we're using to, to uh, configuration files that could be JSON YAML, whatever could, could be the next step. Right. And that could maybe be composable, but I think we're, we're trying to get rid of all the environment variables first, or am I misunderstanding what we're trying to, yeah. So the, the, the main, so the, 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 yes, the crawl step is to get to where we can run a single command that with a bunch of flags that uh, duplicates a scenario. So like if I have a test failure and I want to rerun that, I can just look at one line in the build log that specifies the, uh, the cube test command. And then I can just run that cube test command with the same flags and get the same, uh, run the same scenario, run the same result. Um, and cause right now we don't actually have that. We have most of that, but there's still a bunch of goo in edrunner.sh. So in reality, it's like you have to run these 15 commands in this particular order. You want to simplify that to just run this one command. And then once we have that, we can continue iterating above the, uh, you know, in the scenario, like how the scenario composes those flags that it sends the cube test. Uh, we can, you know, um, we can continue improving that interface. Sounds like a very sensible plan. Um, maybe now is not a bad time to just um, comment that uh, the, the CNCF is, is also has had for some time a not very successful uh, project to try and build uh, a CI CD system for CNCF projects in general, um, you can imagine things not too dissimilar from what Eric just described, where you want to, you know, install Kubernetes version X on platform Y, and then install Prometheus version 
P uh, <clears throat> built by vendor Q on you know that cluster and then tested for conformance, etc. And and creating trying to create some kind of toolkit where it's uh, reasonably straightforward to create those permutations of things, which is you know philosophically at least I think along the lines of what Eric's been describing. Um, and I, I'm involved, there are actually three parallel projects, somewhat independent projects there by different companies trying to do essentially the same thing. Um, one of them is Huawei, and we, we actually have a sort of a product that we're planning to donate to the CNCF that, that actually aims to provide that kind of workflow functionality where you can, you know, plug arbitrary nodes into a workflow graph and have them feed data from one uh, phase to the next. Um, and then there are a couple of others, but the only reason I mention it is that we might be, you know, rather than rebuilding and redesigning and rethinking all that stuff from scratch, uh, it's possible that this group could uh, either, you know, take, take some kind of hints from what's already been done over there, or perhaps even reuse some of the software, um, by no means mandate, mandating that we have to, you know, do the same thing or anything, but it sounds like the same problem we're trying to solve. Um, and very briefly, one of the solutions, which is the Huawei one, is, is uh, if you can imagine a, like a timeline, a horizontal line with time, uh, and then vertical lines, you know, dropping off that, um, where on each of those vertical lines is a bunch of parallel um, processes that are running, uh, independent of each other, and they're just basically containers, and then flows from each of those into some other combination of, uh, of these nodes, and when all the input flows are complete, then the node triggers and produces its own set of output flows. You imagine chaining these things together and there's a graphical interface where you can drag and drop these flows together. <clears throat> um, for example, you might you know, build, a, build an AWS uh, set of nodes and then you might uh, build Kubernetes in parallel with that. And then when, once of those are, when, when both of those are complete, they will automatically trigger the next step, which is to install Kubernetes on the AWS nodes, uh, and then run, you know, some arbitrary set of these tests, as Eric defined, some of them perhaps serially, so, you know, basic cluster test before we run anything else, because if the cluster doesn't work, nothing else will work, and once that's gone, fire off slow ones, fast ones, parallel ones, whatever, in parallel, and then at the end, you know, produce some kind of report or incremental report along the way. Um, is, is approximately what's been built. So they've, they've built so far uh, such a thing for Kubernetes, Prometheus, uh, and Core, Core DNS uh, for testing those on top of each other. Um, and the, the plan is to sort of build that into a proof of concept, show it to people, and see whether that's an avenue worth pursuing further. So is that, is that open source right now, or is that still a work in progress? Uh, it's both. Uh, it's it's all open source. So, so the underlying uh, workflow app, uh, platform is called Container Ops, and that's open sourced. Um, and we've offered to donate that to the CNCF. Um, and then, in addition to that, there's this kind of CNCF specific work, which is building these um, nodes of these workflows um, and and configuring a setup like that to to demonstrate using this thing. Uh, to test multiple CNCF projects in parallel. And that's all open source and work in progress. Okay. And my understanding is we're going to get the opportunity to see a demo of at least some of that proof of concept two weeks from today at 8 a.m. Pacific time at the next CNCFCI working group meeting, which I'm happy to uh, forward a link to the SIG testing group for those who are interested in checking it out. Yeah, sounds good. I've also got a design document, like a sort of high-level proposal document for exactly what I described with some pretty pictures and things in it uh, that might be easier to understand in my rambling description. Uh, I can plunk that in the notes here as well. That sounds good to me. Cool. Um, so cube tests is sort of our interface for running, you know, running our EDE tests and, um, we have a project in testing for Boscus, which is sort of a pool of resources that something can lease. The main goal for this is to make it so that, um, 
Right now we have a pretty tight coupling between the job and the GCP project in which it runs, which uh, is you know, nice because it provides isolation between jobs, but it's gross in the sense that uh, it makes it a little bit more awkward to, uh, you know, we have to create a bunch of new projects for each new release, which we want to get away from. I think another thing which would be really helpful is if we could get cube tests to pass conformance tests using a local cluster of some sort. I feel like that's a frequent uh, SIG testing, you know, help. Like, hey, I launched a local cluster, and how do I get ED tests to pass on this? Um, I think if we showed people, it, one, if we figured out how to get that working ourselves and then, um, you know, provided instructions for how people can do that, that might be useful because, like, not everybody has, you know, easy access to a GCP project they want to use to launch things. I think I'm mostly okay with that, with the exception that, like, a local cluster sort of isn't possible on Darwin right now just because I can't run the server components on my laptop. But I'm talking about, like, a Docker and Docker type cluster. Something that could work across all environments I would be more open to that. How about, does Minikube work on Darwin? Um... I will have to get back to you. I believe it does. It's more, it does. yeah, I mean, think of it like Docker machine. So it's a virtual machine that happens to run all of those. Okay. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, I feel like there's frequently people who are interested in fixing tests, but they don't, you know, they're probably, I suspect they're not wanting to get a build by a cloud provider. Um, you know, and they're not working, right? I guess for us at Google, I don't know, we don't really, we can start VMs and that doesn't, easier for us to start VMs since it's our thing. Um, so it'd be nice if there was some way for someone who doesn't want to run a cloud VMs to help us. Yep. On test grid, um, so the, you know, I think the, the biggest thing which actually isn't, um, you know, so there's still a couple of pieces that are like not open sourced and we'd really like to get them open source so that other people can, you know, one, like if someone else uh, wanted to run test grid right now, they could check their config into our repo, but like if they wanted to run their own test grid instance, um, they don't have the way, a way to do that and we'd like to make that possible. Also, that would then make it easier for community members uh, to improve both the updater and then the dashboard. So the updater is what uh, you know produces the state, and then the dashboard is what displays the state. Um, so both of those are sort of slow and written in Python, and uh, you know not uh, accessible to the community. We'd like to make them accessible to the community. Um, and then uh, alerts are something we really want. Um, and then internally, uh, the internal version has these, this neat feature where you can sort of like, if like a test has a non-fatal error, you can sort of display that by still having it be green, but maybe put like an E on the cell. Um, and yeah, so, I, so the, the grouping related tabs together might be useful to, um, you know, it, uh, well, actually, one is I'd really love to make it so that we, instead of having like a Google GKE or a GKE dashboard and a GCE dashboard and an AWS dashboard, um, I'd really like to reconstruct it around SIGs um, so that like SIGs sort of feel empowered to like, these are the tests I care about and it's, you know, motivation to keep them green. Um, and then once we have that, uh, we can... Um, soon we'll have the ability to group related tabs together. So we could say that, oh, these are all the SIG CLI 1.7 tests, and these are all the SIG CLI um, 1.6 tests. And uh, so then they, that, and it'll provide a summary of that. So it could be very quick to sort of scan and look if I'm having any problems on 1.7 or 1.6 or on AWS or on GCE or however you want to compose your groups. And last thing, uh, monitoring sort of talked about that a little bit earlier. Um, so we're, you know, we have some BigQuery metrics, which we're sort of calculating continuously. Um, we want to put those onto a graph on Velodrome somewhere, and then also just, uh, you know, also get to where we are alerting on things so that if something goes broken or if our test infrastructure is down and we're not even running tests that we, um, start to, uh, use, you know, whatever we, we have a place to see that and alert on that.
Yeah, my confusion on that one was just whether or not it sounded like there was already a Prometheus server out there in service of Velodrome, but it might not be running on the same infra cluster that like Munch GitHub and and Prow are running on. Is, is that? I think it? they're actually all running on separate clusters. <laughs> okay. Um and yeah, so I mean, but yeah, fun fundamentally, I, I don't particularly care. I mean, you know, I think yeah, this is yeah. Me, you know, maybe we just reuse reuse that one, or I don't know. I don't have strong opinions. I just want to make it yeah. so that we can write alerts and have graphs. I don't either. I guess the reason I brought up the single cluster in my head was whether or not that would make it any easier to start adding non Googlers to uh, test in for rotation. Because I think as an ideal, that's really great. I think we'll probably need to spend some time in the coming weeks figuring out how to break that down into actionable tasks and where like what documents or tribal knowledge were, uh, were lacking. Um, so right. I'm hopeful to, you know, participate in some discussions in the upcoming meetings and in the channel to figure out what we can do to help accomplish that. Cause I think that that would be a really big force multiplier for potentially some of the rest of this work. Um, cause there's some areas, some bug fixes, some pieces of code that we can't fully test or fully review because we don't know how it's going to affect the actual test infra that's running right now. Getting more insights into how this would all affect production, so to speak, would be helpful. Yeah. Yeah, I think one thing is, you know, if we aren't aware, there's this go.case.io slash on call, which says who the build cop and the test infra on call person is. Um, I would, you know, if, if anyone knows of some open source tool or some, you know, convenient way to generate these, uh, rotations as well as, you know, display them, uh, that would be useful. Um, right now we sort of have our internal rotation tool that this is sort of the data backing on, which makes it awkward to, I feel like that's, you know, really, if we, if we had a way to produce a rotation and display that, like there's nothing um, you know, if we had eager members, I know we've had at least, like, I think Maru has uh, said that he'd be willing to, but we don't actually have a mechanism right now to make Maru on call. And, um, yeah, so if someone knows of a good way that, um, of doing this, uh, I'd be interested in setting that up. Okay, cool. Uh, well, we've once again gone over time. Um, I think this is an awesome list and my proposal would be that sometime that we sort of leave this open for discussion, uh, any follow-up items next week and then two weeks from today, I'd like to see us actually capture these into issues that we actually, that we commit to a milestone, um, so that we have something we can present to the community to say, yeah, this is what this SIG is committed to for the upcoming release. Um, if that sounds good to everybody. We can review uh, the realism of that next week, but uh, I, I think this is fantastic work. I just want to keep carrying it forward. Wait, so two weeks from today, what? So I'm thinking, uh, let's, you know, let's give ourselves a week to sort of chew this over, and then I think two weeks from today, I'd like us to sort of, yeah, lock down what we're committed to for 1A, because I think what you, the list you've proposed there looks pretty good. Um, uh, yeah, I think I, I'd really like to, you know, get maybe if we could have assignees or something. Yes, you know, so yeah, that's what I mean. It, that's yeah. <clears throat> okay, cool. Anything else? Oh, um, would we be interested in having, I think um, Justin, right, was mentioning, suggesting the idea of having like a office hours you know, where we don't necessarily have an agenda, but maybe we throw up a, I don't know, be there to ask questions. I don't know if anybody's interested in this or if we need this. I feel like we're, you know, pretty responsive on the Slack channel. Keeping it on the Slack channel would certainly be my vote. Um, alternatively, something that came up during the leadership summit was a number of other SIGs sort of alternate weeks where they have one week that's a little more strategic and one week that's a little more tactical. And so we could do that sort of schedule where the tactical week is, you know, what's everybody working on? What specific issues do we have? Office hours, um, that sort of stuff. At the moment, I've just kind of been 
you know, we're, we're, we sort of play it by ear. If we have a slow week, we generally tend to find things to talk about tactically speaking, but I want to make sure we're open to the broader community. So I think the office hours question is a great thing to, uh, to ask of the mailing lists and potentially of Kubernetes dev to see what folks there think. But I, I personally have tried to be as responsive as I can on the Slack channel. And I think that's, we've gotten some good questions answered there. And Justin seemed to find his questions answered there as well. My questions are answered. Cool. Okay. Um, and unless there's anything else, I think I will call it a happy Tuesday. All right. Cool. Thanks, everybody. I will uh, see you all next week. Bye.